this, love this opening song. Hey, everybody, welcome. Ron Onesti here in Rock and Roll Heaven outside of Chicago in St. Charles at the Arcata Theater. We are hanging and banging tonight with my brothers Vinnie Apice and Carmine Apice with our special guest, John Payne and Gilby Clark. Another great episode, our 44th week here on Artists on Lockdown. And let's get the party started and bring to the microphone my, again, my brother, Mr. Vinnie Apice. Let's see what he's got to pick on me, I mean, to say about. Uh, things <laughs> this week. I have been <laughs> wake up. It was I timed myself. It was like 14 seconds. Now don't even, <laughs> don't even. Where are you? Look at that monitor behind you. Man. That's that pretty serious stuff. Big. I ain't playing. I am playing. I'm I'm at the point now. You nice. know when you when you guys come into my place and I got to rent backline for you. I'm renting yeah. backline for this show now. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's nice. That's a big monitor. You got the whole. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's right really cool. There. That's good. Right, it's really good. cool. Uh, yeah. And so look at that shirt. Why? Right, they always come in square too, right? No, they don't. It's square? it's a it's our printing presses. We make thousands of them, and it's just uh, square. Anyway, square kind of thing. <laughs> let's bring our big brother to the microphone. We got a full show tonight, like we do all the time. Carmine a piece, vanilla fudge, and so many other things. What's up, Carmine? Hey, dude. Oh, this thing's in the way. Look at this. My microphone. Yeah, come on. You can't cover yeah, it up. There you go. Okay. How you doing, dude? How you so, doing? So good to see you. Love the uh, the album oh. on the cover. Hey, um, Vinny. Vinny. Vinny's just trying What's to figure out. What's going on? Did you get home hey. okay? Yeah, I did. I did. Everything's good. We just released our Cactus uh, cactus Tightrope mm -hmm. record. It's doing well. We have to uh, feature it on one of these shows. Absolutely. Really and we got to get a date down. I mean, let's, let's go. Let's, let's go. do it. Let's, let's pick a it. date. I'm telling you, before I do anything we're, else, we're, I want you guys to pick a date. We're going to be doing Yardbirds, Cactus, and Pat Travis together. Wow. I can't that's wait. A, a show. I can't wait. Right, well, so hope we're going to have to change the name of this show because uh, gigs are coming up now. Yeah, you know, well, I was going to talk to you guys about that offline, but, you know, we're going to have some stuff going on Thursday night. So you it'll be gigging and banging. Gig <laughs> gigging and banging. Where are they Where are they in the country or in the world? Yeah, right. You know, that would be good. We should do that. We could do backstage, and we can be had the live. This would be awesome. We'll yeah. talk about this. But, yeah. hey, guys. Hey, we, we got to do a hanging and banging live at your place. Uh, you know what? You know? Yeah, we, we should so do a show. Talk about. Yeah, that'd be great. Absolutely. I've got... I've got hotel suites now in my place, like oh, the Sinatra yeah. suite, the Zeppelin suite, the Vinny ah. suite, the Carmine suite. Well, <laughs> the right. Vinny suite is the, where the housekeeping keeps the, the cart, but we can move <laughs> it over. <laughs> Somebody said, uh, AC said, nice shirt, Ron. Yeah. Well, at least she got. That's cold. nice. So what a square, you know. <laughs> what do you have on your hat tonight that you're picking this on This is uh, 13, my birthday. Uh, I got 60s tie dye because that never goes out of style. I'm just no, saying. I, I never wear I never wear printed <laughs> shirts. I have one printed shirt, an, an affliction shirt. That's it. Well, that's you know we got to get you some Arcata shirts, some swag. Uh, Guys, yeah. you believe this where? is 44 <laughs> square? Uh, 44 40... shows without an Arcata shirt. That's all I see it as. Yeah, okay. That's great. All right. We got to send these Pretty guys amazing. Kind of swag. Pretty amazing 44 shows, though. It yeah. really is, man. I mean, think about it. 44 is getting really close yeah. to 52, a yeah. full year. You believe that? A full year of this it's stuff. Eight years difference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love when you get to be profound, but you, you know, it makes everybody just stop and think. <laughs> For a minute. You can't fool me. All can't his life. Me. He's been like that all his life. Oh, my gosh. He no used to stop you... my mother in his tracks. <laughs> hey, tracks. I, I got a royalty check here from Carmine's company, Power Rock <laughs> Enterprises. Oh, did you imagine. really? How much? Check it out. How much? What do we got there? I can't I see can't it. I can't see it. It's, oh. How much is can't it? see it. Ten dollars and thirty-three cents. Ten thirty-three. That's bigger. Right? At least that's got dollars. The last few checks right? only had cents on it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know who sent yeah. it out. You know who sent that out. No, it was hand delivered by my brother Frank. Your, your older hand. brother. <laughs> I don't even know what it. Who buys? I don't know what that for. What? I don't know what that is. Didn't he give you a statement? I think it's attached. Yeah, the back. statement was this is BS. <laughs> this that was the statement. <laughs> He said he, he, here's a statement. 
Here's a statement. I quit from delivering these <laughs> stupid little checks all my life, Frank. <laughs> Guys, oh, we it got was a big a gross of twelve dollars. We oh. got take a taxes big, out. huge show tax? tonight. Come on, I love the chat out? with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love the chat about Vinny's uh, challenged income situation right now. We can I go mean, to In and Out Burger and eat. You're talking Black Sabbath, freaking right. Dio. You're talking Last in Line. You're talking a check of ten dollars and fifty three cents. <laughs> <laughs> How's the career going? <laughs> It's good, gotta, it's good. We're gonna play some karaoke bars soon. But anyway, let's get to our guest tonight because we got these love these guys. I'm yeah, telling you. Good guys. Oh, just tremendous. And I gotta say, ah. we've had some great guests every week. I mean, like good people, you know? We do. Yeah. And Ted Nugent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I hope Teddy's he's not great. watching. I hope he's not watching. You know what? No, no, he knows where we love him. Because he uh, actually he he's been really cool with us. Yeah. Not a whole lot of politics. No, just it's all about rock and roll. That's what I love when he plays my place. Yeah. I say, Ted, yeah. just kind of you know minimize it a little bit. He's like, he gives me two hours of solid rock and roll. Really, really good. Yeah. All right. Let's bring to the microphone our first guest. Really excited about him. All kinds of things. You know him from Guns and Roses, but so many other things. We got a lot to talk about. Let's bring our buddy Gilby. Gilby. Gilby Clark, where you at, brother? Hey, hey. There he is. hey dude. What's hey. up, guys? How are you? <laughs> Woo, Gilby. 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 here. Well, yeah. welcome. You're hanging and banging with two legends uh, on your left there, or your right, maybe. Yeah, right on, man. I mean, <laughs> it's going to get loud in here, that's for sure. Yeah. How did you beat these? Uh, you know Carmine, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I know Carmine. I, I yeah. don't know Vinny, but I've seen Vinny yeah. play many times. Yeah. Like go, yeah. Going back to the Derringer days. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, yeah. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a huge Derringer fan. Huge. Oh, huge. really? Just, Derringer's, Derringer's going to be on this show in a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, we're excited. I, with, with, Weird with, Al. When, when I first moved to California from, from Cleveland, and bands like uh, Van Halen and Quiet Riot and all those bands were just starting out, and uh, I never saw Van Halen live in, in the club days, but I, I saw Randy Rhodes and all them, and my friends were talking about this guy, Eddie Van Halen, how great he was, that you've never seen anything like it. My quote was, he'll never be Rick Derringer. Oh wow, <laughs> that's a great. Let's save that one, that story for next week. He was my yeah, hero, that's man. Good. That's a good one. I, I tell Actually, you what, I saw you... I saw Van Halen at uh, the Whiskey wow. when I moved out here, yeah, and uh, that, that was right after Derringer. And they said you should check this band out, Van Halen. Van Halen, okay. So I went to the Whiskey, and it was packed, of course. And uh, man, that was great. Eddie yeah. was. The local bands oh, back then were insane. Just insane. Yeah. yeah. Well, did you get so so you you said one of your uh, icons obviously um, did you did you were you influenced like methodically how you played by him? Well, you know it's interesting. I mean, we all have our influences, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff. He just uh, he just he was everything I wanted to be. You know, it's like he could sing, he could play guitar, he could write songs, he played with other people. There's yeah. just something about him that I really related to. And I loved his music, you know. It's like every record, you know, was to me perfect. I said I, I knew every word to every song. I mean, I, you know, back then I wasn't really listening to records to learn to play guitar. I was just like listening to them for, you know, I just liked their music. Sure. Well, see, somebody's wow. chiked in there watching from Lyon, France. I know. All right. Wow. <clears throat> well, everybody, you know, we've got the chat going. So anybody have any questions for our guests towards the end of the show? I'll check out some questions. And if they're cool questions, we'll ask our guests. And you'll win a prize. I don't know what it's going to be. Um, dinner with Gilby Clark at his home. Hey, hey I'll, send the, I'll send them this. I'll send them this. I'll send them this. I'll, them this. I'll, you know I'll what? endorse it. All kidding aside, a, a freaking autographed thing like that from you. I want that. I want that. And I, I got the one for 29 cents down there, too. Somewhere. I saw it the other day. You guys are hysterical. Hey, uh, let's bring our next guest also going to join us uh, uh, with our little, uh, our jam here tonight. Um, one of the greatest voices in, in rock and roll. Love this guy. Again, so many other uh, things he's been a part of. Of course, you know him from Asia. Let's bring John Payne, our buddy. John. Hey. There he is. Hey. There he is. Hey, hey Johnny. Hi, John. How are you? Good, so, man. How you doing, bro? Not bad at all. Good. Yeah, good. Can, can we just let you talk for the rest of the show, just with your accent? I'll talk, just... a load of, I'll talk a load of rubbish. Yeah, I'm really from uh, Queens, New York. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, 
<laughs> like like uh, queens like Dan- in your dreams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now that's another story. Right. Um, there's um, like David Coverdale. I had uh, elocution lessons. Really? To speak, <laughs> to speak properly. Hey, Dick. Yeah. And now we got everybody mm-hmm. saying where they're from. We got Sweden, Philadelphia, Tennessee. Wow. Yeah. Everybody keeps saying where you're from. Chime Montreal. in so we know what yeah. we're Let's talking know. to. Las Vegas. Germany. Germany. Gilby wow. Clark, Germany. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Good so, guys, experience. welcome to Hanging and Banging. So good to see you. John, what have you been doing to keep your chops going? Uh, I mean, you got to be uh, – we're going to start opening the, the venue soon. So Yeah, and, and we're playing at your place at some stage when it gets <laughs> – yeah. August, August 28th. August yeah, 28th. 28th. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I haven't been there for a while. Yes. And uh, looking forward to having a nice meal beforehand. <laughs> yeah. Usual. I love cooking. The meatballs. The meatballs. Yeah. Yes. It's a lovely. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been uh, – I set up a studio here in Las Vegas. Well, I set, I bought a house, and, and uh, it stopped becoming a house. It's basically a studio with a couple of bedrooms. I've got an 80-channel mixing console. It's all analog and stuff and 25-foot wow. ceilings, and, and it's – it's really helped out during this time of, of uh, no concerts. I mean, I came back from a cruise, um, which many of us have done, the rock and roll cruises out of Fort Lauderdale, oh, yeah. on March 15th, and America was shut down. And uh, basically until last weekend, that was the first time I did a gig. Mm. And it's been over a year without a show. Uh, Where'd you do a gig? I did a corporate gig in Dallas for a guy's... Uh, but wow. birthday, a guy called Dave Stickland, who, who's an, actually an English guy, and uh, it was his wife Andrea's birthday, and they they bought the the hotel for three nights, the wow. Virgin Hotel there, and cool. C- Coolio was on, uh, <laughs> Young MC, Tone Loke, and and Jean Payne, was, and me with the, <laughs> with the with the Asian band, and um, we had Billy. Gibbons do 12 songs with us. Oh, man. Which was right. phenomenal. And Billy's tone, he had a Magnavox amp, and his tone yeah, was just, yeah, just yeah. superb. And he sang great, and he was really cool. He goes, okay, you sing every other line in Sharp Dress Man. So I got to sing Sharp Dress Man with Billy, and he's, oh. he's, he's oh, a gentleman, a real gentleman, and, and hopefully yeah, I'll work we, with him again. <laughs> yeah, we did a gig with uh, Drum Wars, me and Vinny, last year, uh, just before the uh, everything shut down. Mm in uh, Washington, D.C., and Billy was the special guest. And I think I played, you didn't get to play with him, right, Vin? I played with him, I think. No, no, I, I, I played with him at some point. But we had to play really low. Yeah. Yeah, he plays very quiet. He has yeah. no monitors on stage or mm-hmm. anything. It's so, so, Gilby, listen to this. We, we're <laughs> setting up just before the show. Billy actually rehearsed one day at, at my house here in Vegas. We all rehearsed in, in the house. And uh, we got him a couple of monitors, and he just plugged into one of the amps here and was so low maintenance. We come to do the gig and we're, we're all on in-ears. We take our in-ear system with us. And he goes to me, he goes, hey, get the sound guy over. And he goes, sound guy, he goes, what are these? He said, they're wedges for you. You've got two <laughs> wedges. He goes, I don't want these. He goes, he says, why? He goes, I spent a lot of money on these shoes. People have got to see my shoes. Probably the velvet ones, yep. <laughs> yeah. The velvet ones. <laughs> And, and the monitors one. are stripped when he just hears his voice from out front. From out front. Isn't that insane? It is insane. Wow. But, you know, it's the same thing with a lot of the early English vocalists and how I learned as well. It's like Steve Marriott and... Um, hey, Vanilla guys. Fudge had no monitors for yeah. years. Well, you no know, look at Rod, Rod Stewart. The, 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 you divert these croaky voices because you had to sing above everything else. And the PA was out in front of you. I you know, I never had wedges at all. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, we, the first time I had wedges was 1973 with uh, BBA. That's the right, first time. Right. Right. Before that, wow. Vanilla Fudge, Cactus, no wedges. I mean, that's Singing impossible. Think about it. Yeah. Well, like you said, if you're used to it and you do it every night, you really don't know the difference. You yeah. Know? Well, I it's guess. Great. <laughs> I've done I've done lots of gigs with Billy, and it just blows my mind because you're right. He plays quiet volume. And he doesn't want any weight. He wants to just hear the surroundings. Yeah, know? and he, he was saying that ZZ, he said that ZZ Top plays so quietly on yeah. stage. Mm-hmm. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah. And, you know. That's, that's it, the trick, yeah. He's got, he's got tone for miles. And, yeah. 
seven, seven gauge strings, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and a great guy, too. Oh, he's spoken, wonderful. Loves yeah. everybody. Great, generous with the fans. Just has a great time. <laughs> I don't know how he gets those those hats that are like knitted for him or whatever the heck they yeah. he's wearing. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. a great, great guy. I'm going to throw it a different direction here. So, <laughs> you guys, I put on Italian festivals in Chicago here, and one year I had Nancy Sinatra at my Italian <laughs> festival. So right. you know, now so what what do I get, right? I've got all these blue hairs, all these they think she's gonna come out and do fly me to the moon and, and <laughs> New York, New York, and they're all sitting there and she comes out and her band all looking like Gilby Wow <laughs> Boots it was like a rock thing. People almost gave people heart attacks. But Gilby, you played with Nancy. Yeah, many years, like about five years. <laughs> no kidding. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Made a couple wow. of records with her and when when I first started with her, um, she had Hal Blaine on drums. Wow. Isn't that oh, amazing? Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah, which is really, really great. And uh, it's 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 uh, you know Don Randy that owns the uh, baked potato here in Los yeah, Angeles. Yes, yeah, yeah. So yeah. so Don was her musical director and I used to go out there on Tuesday nights. Wow. Carmen, you've been there a few yeah, times. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And Don came up to me one time and said, you know, Nancy's gonna do a record and tour. Do you would you be interested? And I go you do hear how loud I play. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and, and, and they goes, you know, Nancy always likes to have two guitar players. She likes a rock and roll guy, and she wants someone who plays the jazz. So I, I, I got in there with her, and the first thing it is, it's a reading gig. They just hand you the sheet music. Oh. And, I mean, I can read like most musicians, you know, chord charts, <laughs> things like that, yeah. you know. And I started looking at it. the hardest problem I had is they're all from the '60s and they're written in pencil. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know oh. about you, but my eyes aren't so bad. But I mean, pencil. <laughs> I really got. I was like, and and then she hand you sheet music. I go, ah, you know, I think I can figure this one out with the sheet music, you know, because the songs weren't that hard, except for some of the jazz stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah, but I ended yeah. up, um, like I said, did many years with Hal, and then I actually brought in Clem Burke, played drums with her uh, right, for quite nice. a few years. What a what a was, great. Clem is a great drummer. I well, used to go to the Fox, and, Fox and Hounds on uh, Ventura Boulevard, and uh, I bumped into Clem many times in there. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's, he's well, great. It's a good thing you didn't get Vinny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're off the stage. Yeah, if, if, she, if she did any ballads, forget about it. Yeah. yeah. Vinny's That's one of his fortes is no ballads. <laughs> I used to turn my Marshall cabinet the other way, <laughs> you know, oh, right yeah. from the front, because you, know, you know it was a little bit loud. But but she loved it. She's sweet. Yeah, you know, I was right. My family's Italian, so the only problem about the, those tours were I gained twenty to thirty pounds every time oh. because they, they always go to the best Italian restaurant in town at three o'clock in the morning. Right, right. <laughs> it's like your dad. It's, it's, you're, yeah, you're, you're these, they kept open. They kept it open. They for kept her. it open Just for her. Yeah. And absolutely. you go and you eat, and it's like you know. And then you go to bed, and you know what happens then. So. They did that with yeah. Rod Stewart too. We used to finish the gig and then go to a, the best restaurant in town. You know, and then go to bed. You go to bed. <laughs> and it just I, sits I stopped there. doing. I stopped doing it. I said I can't do this. I'm just getting. Well, ready. you stop going to bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just stay, go to bed. Just stay at the Italian restaurant. So yeah. you, you you mentioned Gilby Clark's name. I gotta be honest. Nancy Sinatra is probably not the first name that comes to mind when I mention yours. <laughs> Just like when I mentioned John Payne, like Johnny Cash's stepdaughter doesn't come to my mind. I know, that's weird, isn't it? <laughs> How did and, that happen? I know, I worked with her for, for three years, and uh, Carleen Carter is just, just such a cool singer, and I did a project with her in Canada, um, in uh, Scandinavia, and uh, it did really well, um, and we occasionally keep in touch, but yeah, it's kind of bizarre. What kind of music was that? It was uh, a rock with a bit of country and western in it, hmm. and wow. there were there were two Norwegian Norwegian stars and and me and Carleen and it was it was a cool record. It was actually produced by the same guy that did the band TNT out of Trondheim up in the north wow. in Norway. What wow. did the, the CCP is it is it the Russian CC, CCCP? So it was uh, Carleen Casino oh. and Claudia. Okay, I you know I know yeah. Russia used to be called CCCP. I thought it had something to do with that. Well, I kind of think it was just a play on it, really. Oh, okay. It was Swedish, wasn't it? Some kind of a <laughs> no, wait, Norwegian. Norwegian, well, Norwegian, right, so, right, right. So what I want to know is, who in your family was Italian, Gilby? Yeah. My my mother. 
Your mother. Yeah. What was yeah, the my last mother, name? Santorelli. Oh, oh. hey, yo. <laughs> just like, just like Eddie Trunk, his mother yeah. is Italian too. We we're finding all these cool things out on this show. You know? I know, it really <laughs> is. It really is. But Gilby, would you do me a favor from now on? It could it be G I. L B I, please. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I know Clark isn't very Italian. Well, it does end in a vowel, yeah. though. I appreciate you throwing that E in there. Yeah. Clark, Clark. But I'm sure you guys can all relate. You know, it's like you go through your life, people like, yeah, I'm Italian, I'm Italian. They go, Clark? It's yeah. not Italian. I go, well, you know, it's my mother, <laughs> which was the good food side. So well, you, look, you could look Italian. He looks Italian. He looks Italian. He looks Italian. He's got the mustache. <laughs> the mustache. Come on. Just like yeah, our moms. Well, my brother Frank used to have that mustache, but he had short hair. So he used to tell me he looked like a porn star. Yeah, he had the short the, hair on the, the big mustache. Porn hand. Oh, yeah. Ron Jeremy. Yeah. Ron, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ron. Gilby, I, I got I, I to gotta go to the GNR years because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing all these stories. You know, obviously we know about the lovely and talented Axel Rose, how, how you know, his freaking <laughs> world a little nuts. How did you, it seemed like you were like, literally like a, a ping pong ball uh, being like or like a cat with a mouse just be, I mean that whole experience is like freaking weird I mean in a nutshell what was that about well I mean the the good thing for myself was by the time I got in the band I was uh, I actually just turned 30 so you know from being around Hollywood all those years you know you you have some pretty crazy experiences so by the time I got into the band been around a little bit and I knew the guys, you know, like as friends. And actually, I knew Izzy the best, which was odd because I ended up replacing him. But what what I kind of caught on with the band was it just kind of seemed like it was a disaster, mm -hmm. like every day. But for some reason, it always <laughs> worked out. It's like I, I, it used to blow my mind from being in bands and making records. It's like whenever something bad happened, it was so dramatic and it could take your band down. But with that band... It's like the worst things happened. That it's like the better it was. It's almost like a promo or something. It was late, but it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we were a little bit late every night, but uh, but yeah. I mean, you know, Slash kind of told me early on. He goes, one of the great things about being in a band, it was like it was like the license to be a fuck up. You know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> you really could you, you really could practically get away with murder. But when you did huh. um, when you did the um, uh, the Stone song with Slash. Like you do, was that your idea? Was that oh, it idea? was, yeah. So, so here's what's interesting. When I got the gig, um, I played with them a couple times. Like I basically, from the day that I walked into the rehearsal studio with them, within two weeks, I was on stage with them. But so I only played with them a couple times, you know. And with, I was in, talking with them for about a week, and then Slash called me and says, "You got the gig. The first show's next week. Learn the whole catalog." And that time it was a 50 song catalog. Oh. And and I said, "Well, why don't you just give me the set list?" And they said, "There is no set list. We make it up as it goes along." Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally had a week to learn 50 songs and this is before oh, YouTube. Man. So I just sat there, you know, with, you know, with a, a cassette yeah. player realistically and and learned everything. And then when I got to the very first show, we we're at Soundcheck and Slash came up to me and he goes, "What are you going to do for your solo?" Mm -hmm. And I went, "Solo?" <laughs> the fuck am I? You're the lead guitar. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna sit there and play guitar, and then Slash comes up, who everybody knows. You know, like, I'm not. I'm not. So I came up with an idea. I go, well, maybe I'll play a little bit of Wild Horses. Yeah. And then, do you want to come doodle with me? And it really, it was. It happened the same day, the first day, and it just kind of organically grew into something that was mm. kind of fun. Like every night, we changed it up a little bit. But I'll tell you what, it was. A, it became a highlight of the show. Oh, thank God. I don't know. I mean, there's no, some great stuff going on, but I, but it was fun. It was fun because <laughs> we, we, we never. That one thing about that band is it never planned anything. I mean, even the day I got in, I was never told what to play, what to wear, what to do. It's <coughs> was, like all that was left over. Was Steven the drummer when you came in, or was it Matt? Matt came in first. Matt was in about a year before I did. Okay. Yeah. So you never played with Steven Adler? Not not with them. I've played with Steven since, you know, but yeah, not, not yeah. during right. those years, no. Yeah. So, so John, you know, just like as Gilby joining like a, a band that was going heroes of his at the time, friends of his, you know, um, uh, you know, John Wetton obviously replaced him. And how was that joining, you know, a band such as an international superstar band? A little, yeah, uh, it, little nervous? It was difficult. I mean, you're talking about um, uh, Kolodna named them the first super group. Wow. You, know, you got ELP. UK, Buggles, yes, all forming this band. And there's 
me sort of coming from nowhere. So it, it was it was quite unnerving. And our first gig was at NHK Hall in Japan, in Tokyo, where we had three nights. Yeah. And I didn't know what to expect. You know? And uh, luckily, it, it went well. But I must admit, I, I don't really get nervous at shows, but those first few shows, I was I was terrified. I was terrified <laughs> more of what people would, would, would say about me. And, and still, you know, you even ask Brian Johnson or you ask anybody that's joined a, a band, um, even if it's the Rolling Stones, you're the new boy, even if you've been in the band for 40 years. Mm -hmm. It never changes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. You're the new guy. They were, <laughs> were they welcoming? I mean, I played, I've, I haven't played, I've had those guys. Uh, I had Asia uh, at my place a couple times. And I mean, they're all nice guys. Uh, three, three out of four of them were for sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna... So they're really quirky. They're yeah. really, really, really quirky. And as a band, it's not like they all go and hang out together. Same with Yes. It's like they all love each other and they all absolutely hate each other. And, exactly. You know, you've got Steve Howe, who's very different from, very. say, John Whitten or Carl Palmer. They're, they're really like four separate people. And that first Asia record, you know, everyone expected it to be this prog extravaganza. Yeah. And it, it wasn't. It was a it was a rock pop record. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that there was always a lot of infighting and changing members and stuff. And I got on it very well with, with, with Jeff and we, we, you know, we did all the, all the songwriting <laughs> when I joined, but, um, there, there were some very bizarre moments. In that fact. Well, Jeff, I mean, Jeff was definitely, uh, the, the, the smiley, uh, uh, smiliest of them because I don't think I met four guys that just never smiled <laughs> at all, stayed <laughs> in their dressing room until one minute to freaking show time. <laughs> and that's why I was wondering if they were, I mean, welcoming to you at first and warm or was it just business this business i mean i became friends with all of them but it was all of them separately it was like on a one-to-one -one. Mm -hmm. as a band it wasn't like this big like how my band is now and bands have been before it wasn't like a big family mm -hmm. and it was all worked on a one-to-one -one. and then people you know had their times steve would either be really happy or really pissed off. Right. And then there'd be, you know, infighting. You know, with a, when you start a band... Get that, will you? If that's my mum, tell her I'm busy. <laughs> um, they are all... It's not like a band that grew up together and stayed together and, mm -hmm. and found this family. It's a band that already... Everybody was really successful. Everybody was probably a millionaire at the time, and they got together and, and were really put together by David Geffen and John Kolodna. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, John Wetton wasn't even going to be the lead vocalist. Um, really? They tried the first guy from Journey uh, for, a, for a while. Greg um, Raleigh? No, the guy. Who, the guy oh, um, um. Can't think of his name. Yes. Come on, uh, what guy was, is that? I thought it was Greg Raleigh before no, Steve Perry. No, he, he he did one he did one freaking album or something. Um, did? Yeah, I can't think of his name. Oh, okay. But there was a there was a vocalist before Steve Perry. Yeah, and wow. of course, of course, Greg as well. And it was Greg. I've been, lucky, was... been lucky to work with Greg. Greg's a really really cool guy. Yeah. I mean, Phenomenal. Look, what a lot of people don't know is I started off as a as a guitarist, and you were talking about. Um, Van Halen, and uh, uh, I, I was obviously, like all of us, a great fan of Eddie's playing. And I was in a three-piece Hendrix-type band in my village in, outside London, and I went to see uh, my favorite guitarist at the time was Schenker. Um, oh, yeah. And Michael Schenker group was supported by Van Halen at the Rainbow Theatre in London on their first was it Robert tour. Fleischmann? Robert it Fleischmann? Fleischmann. It was Fleischmann. Robert Fleischmann, correct, correct. He was the first Journey vocalist. He was? So, yeah, I, I, got, I, went, I went and saw um, uh, Michael Schenker group supported by Van Halen, and I was this cocky kid who thought he was the bee's knees playing guitar. And uh, I 
saw Eddie Van Halen come on first and went, oh shit. Right, right. And then Shanko go, okay, I think I'm going to concentrate more on singing than guitar playing. But <laughs> wow. Lately, some people I'm, influence you. They, he influenced you not to play. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> but now, now, I'm, now I'm back playing and I love it. I play a lot with fingers. I play strangely. I only play downstrokes. Um, but I got to do, you know, I, I had this thing after my Vegas show called the Rock Pack, which is like the Rat Pack. But, you know, Lou, Lou Graham's done it. Um, yeah. uh, loads of singers. But I got to uh, get to do some Santana stuff and I bought a 60s SG and did all the wow. early uh, Santana stuff and played guitar. But, um, yeah, so that's how I started. That's incredible, Not, man. Well, you, you mentioned Jeff Jeff and the Buggles. Yes. We, we played Ron's Place with the Platinum Rock All-Stars. Oh, had, yeah. They had Jeff, Rudy Sazo, Gene, Gene Cornish, uh, Bumblefoot, and uh, who was the other guy? Um, Gene? Right. Robert Fleshman. Oh, oh, oh no, no, no. no. <laughs> Phil Narrow, Phil Narrow. And we Phil, played right, that right. song. We played that song video for the cool. radio star. And it was really funny. You know? The first like, song ever on MTV. Yeah. 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 When they launched, when they launched the satellite, that was the first one. And you play video, play. kill the radio. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like your yeah. playing overhand there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Vinny would never do that. No, Did no. you? No. 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 Did you use did you use brushes? <laughs> oh no, I, I used I used the butt I used the butt end of my stick like I always right. use. Right. Yeah. You know, Gilby, well, just, hey, talk, oh, go ahead, man. Go ahead, Ben. No, people go. Do you use brushes? I always reply. Why is my hair messed up? <laughs> oh, I can't no picture brushes. you. You play a you play a ballad before you use a brush. Yeah. <laughs> well, you say somebody said Stop. I play with brushes. I only use one. Yeah. Vinny, I thought you used brushes on heaven and hell, but maybe I'm wrong. You know? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to hear that. It, it, it would be called heaven and hair. Something else. Heaven yeah. and hair. Heaven and brushes. Heaven and hair. Brushes. Heaven and <laughs> now, Gilby, we talk a little bit about the GNR stuff. I mean, hours we could spend on the weirdness of that whole deal, man. Um, but, hey, uh, but wait, before you get going, it's yeah. time for the commercial. All right, we can do that now. We'll do the commercial because I'll tell you what, we started doing yeah. these commercials next week, just like this week, an amazing show. Let's let everybody see what we got in store for them next there week. There you go. Hi, this is Vinny Apathy. I'm Carmine of Peace. It's not Apathy, it's a Peace. And we're here to ah, same tell shirt. you about our hanging and banging <laughs> show. Yeah, and we got some special guests on April 15th uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. At 4 p.m. This is Pacific. And the guests are Dweezil Zappa. It's like a Sons of Rock star. We got Dweezil Zappa, the son of Frank Zappa, who's a friend of mine. And Dweezil played on my guitars. I so know Dweezil for a long time. And we also have uh, the son of the legendary Ginger Baker. Yeah. Kofi Baker, good friend also, and uh, he's going to be there too. Yeah, remember, we did show. that gig together with him. And, yeah. uh, drum was gig with Kofi, me and, and, and Vinny. It was awesome. Yeah. So be there April 15th, 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Western, or Eastern with Pacific, whatever you want to call it. And uh, <coughs> Artists on Lockdown on Facebook. My senses indicate an intruder is... <laughs> oh, <laughs> must be those colors. Those must guys. Those guys. <laughs> we'll see you there. You guys. I only have I only have one shirt. <laughs> As a matter of fact, that gig was at your place with Kofi. Oh, I know that. I know. Yeah, Kofi. Yeah. Co Kofi used to live in Chicago. Oh, he called he? me every week. You got any openings? You got any openings? I'm like, go, wow. I can't. you know, legendary only goes so far every week here, man. We gotta Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> but uh no, it's gonna be a great show. I'll tell you another I mean, Dweezil, what a gentleman and what a genius, really. Yeah, Something uh, yeah. that apple didn't fall short from the tree, as they say. Yeah, right. from the tree. that's right. So anyway, let I me get back to him. Gilby. Yeah. The GNR, another weirdness thing. I Kind of weird. I don't know. So uh, <laughs> I'm not going to focus on this on the whole show. But uh, I'm watching the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremonies. And Steven and you and... and how did that whole thing uh, go down? Uh, how did, actually, did you know you're going to be on that at the time? 
Well, uh, to be honest, I, I, I don't really follow that stuff, you know, yeah. so I didn't, I didn't even know that GNR had been nominated, let alone, you know, I accepted or all that. I really wasn't paying attention, you know, and then uh, I got a call from Matt and Matt told me, you know, what was happening. And, uh, and I go, whoa, that's kind of weird. Because actually, I, I didn't get inducted as part of the band. Matt and Dizzy did along with the original five That's guys. So weird, man. Yeah, and I thought it was a little yeah. odd, and and so I. It, but by the time I found out, it was past, you know, <clears throat> what was you know going down, and and they uh, and so about two days before. First of all, I didn't think anybody was going to play or anything. Two days before the show, uh, Duff called me and says, "Hey, we're going to play." And I go, "Oh, well, have a good time." Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and, and he goes, I, "I go, well, who's going to play?" I go, "I thought Axel's not going and Izzy's not going." He goes, mm -hmm. "Well, they're not, but we want to do something." He goes, "Will you come out?" So, my wife and I flew out and we did the show. We literally rehearsed for it at three o'clock in the morning the night before. And that may sound <laughs> weird, but but Duff had a show in Cleveland the night before. He was doing something with his own band, and so we literally rehearsed after his show at three o'clock in the morning. So we actually, like I played with Steven <coughs> uh, Slash and, and uh, Duff, and then Miles Kennedy sang. But what was weird for me was, like I said, being not inducted, I, I didn't think it was so strange because the Red Hot Chili Peppers were getting inducted at the same time. Mm -hmm. And like, like they did the same thing. They just kind of like picked and choose. Like Dave Navarro, who had been on two multi-million selling records, wasn't inducted yeah. with the Chili Peppers. But a guitar player that paid on the first album was, so you know when when I started hearing about all this stuff, I said, well, you know, it is. I go, are we getting paid for it? No, you know, who cares? Yeah. Well, see, that's hey, same I mean, same that's... thing with same thing with Black Sabbath. Yeah. The different versions. Uh, Ronnie didn't get inducted. I didn't get inducted. Just the original band. And meanwhile, yeah. it was another whole half of band, half a career that, that had successful records, very big that brought successful it back. records. Yeah, yeah. Ronnie joined. Yeah. Yeah. None, none of my bands got inducted. Vanilla Fudge. Come it's on, coming. Give me a break. It's coming. Yeah, we got, bullshit. Yeah. We've got. We can go on care. for hours about it. I mean, it just <laughs> you know awful. we we all whether you care or don't care. I, I don't really know I don't it, if it, it it affects anything. It's like no, I always it say, it's one more line in your bio that no one's paying attention to. But anyway. then I got a, a spam email care. from them saying, why don't you visit our merchandise shop and pick out a nice <laughs> gift? Uh, you know. Yeah. Like they want me to buy something from their merch. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you I go. Just I just thought I'll, I'll buy one shirt and you induct me. Yeah. Deal. That's yeah. It. I just thought that spoke volumes. The kind of guy you are, stand up guy who did that. You know, a lot of guys wouldn't have done it, and I think it was cool that you did that. Well, so. thank you. I mean, to be honest, the only reason why I did it was because Duff asked me, and yeah. and Duff's my friend. You know, Slash is yeah. my friend, and it, it and I did it plainly for that. I honestly didn't even think about all that other stuff. You know, we had no roadies. No text, nothing. We oh, literally no. walked. Oh. I, no, I'm not kidding, because <laughs> wow. it wasn't planned. We decided to do it, like I said, like a day or so before. I literally like walked on and plugged into an amp I'd never seen before. Wow. Oh shit. Wow. You know, we talked a little bit, uh, John. You touched a little bit on uh, the Rock Pack earlier. Obviously, a plan, a plan of the words on the Rat Pack, only a rock and roll style Rat Pack, right? That's cool. Good and, name. Uh, yeah, very very cool. And um, and I was looking at some of the people that uh, performed with this. It's a great concept. And um, would you, could you, uh, um, who was like your, your best combination, do you think? Who was someone that was like, man, we got to take this one on the road? Yeah, I mean, it, it was quite a su surprising thing. And uh, I put it together quite shortly after leaving my Vegas show, mm -hmm. Raiding the Rock Vault, in 2014. So I had this concept of having uh, an English pub on stage <laughs> and, uh, my version of, of Asia would come out, do three Asia songs, and then a big screen would come up with a pub in Covent Garden in London, and then on one side of the stage there's this bar with a load of drinks in with someone behind the bar, and I'd go and serve a drink. I said, I've known the guy 20 years. It's Lou Grant from Foreigner, and Lou would come out. I talked to him briefly for a couple of minutes about his career, and then we'd go and do three or four foreigner songs. Um, basically, concept. everybody that did it, it was, <laughs> it was, it was so cool. Um, the first half would be the three Asia songs and then Lou would come on and do one and then uh, Mickey Thomas would come on and do one and 
Fee Wavel from the Tubes would come and do one. Uh, or, or they actually they did three each, and then the second half it was just one, 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 and then we'd all sing together at the end. But um, as performers, um, Tony Lewis from the outfield, who sadly God, God rest one of my soul. best friend, God rest his soul, he sang in the same keys. You know, he's got that Colin Hay Sting type voice, yeah. you know, really high, singing in the same keys. His voice was just phenomenal. Mickey Thomas. Still hitting the high E in Jane. Wow. You know? uh, Robin Zander. Right? Oh, yeah. it's, it, and as a performer, Fee Wable from the Tubes. Um, what, a, what a great front man. You know? uh, from the early songs like White Punks on Dope to mm -hmm. uh, she's, a, she's a Beauty, you know? no, which is very kind of, very kind of hi-fi. And actually kind of difficult to play a lot of those songs. And I, so, I don't... Do you think I had a favorite? Well, the whole thing is just a great concept. I mean, you know, to do, to bring like Lou or you would have brought like a Tony or like two or three of those guys and do a show like that, bring them on, yeah. bring them on, bring them on. Like it's a greatest hits kind of a thing hosted. I mean, as a promoter and a venue owner, I would have been first in line. Like I want that show. Yeah. At one, one stage, um, we had like six people involved in it from – Steve Walsh in Kansas, you know, doing oh, Dust gosh. in the Wind. And, I mean, come on. Um, we played a, a few stadiums down in, in Florida with it, and it, it was it was very, very cool. And I, and I continue to do a similar thing still. Well, Hey, I'm, hey I'm, Ron. Ron, yeah. you're not only a venue owner and a promoter. You're this is going to be a shot, host. guys. You're a talk show host now, too. <laughs> Yeah. You got to add that in the resume. Listen, yeah. for me to be the second banana to the Apathy of Peace Brothers, are you kidding me? <laughs> How cool am I? I get I to hang with you guys. I have a question for John. John, was the, the I saw the Rock Vault many times with Paul Shortino. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah me was too. that your idea? <clears throat> so uh, I came up with uh, a concept, and I wrote a 42-page uh, treatment, which was basically the story of my life growing up hearing music from the 60s, Radio Caroline out in the, yeah. in the sea, going from, and on one side of the stage, I had an AM radio station, and then I brought it to my friend David Kirschenbaum, who was an entrepreneur, record producer, right. to produce Tracy Chapman, um, Duran Duran, and he was an A&M executive, and he kind of helped me put it all together, and, uh, you know, it was, it was the... But there, was some other guy, there was some other guy involved. There was a guy. There. there was a guy called Harry Cal, who was the producer who got um, right. an investor involved. Right. And um, you know, it it was great. I had Elvis's old dressing room, and that. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. I mean, I've, the stage. I've I've been there many times uh, with Paul, and yeah. I, I I loved his show, and all my friends were in it, and Howard Lease was in it when I saw him, and yeah, I, great show. I I bought Howard in, I I bought Paul in, I bought Tracy oh. Tracy Guns, yeah. Doug Doug Aldridge, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was it was cool. I also got Lou to do a couple of shows with us. Wow, and Mickey I, Thomas. I, I didn't know that you were. I, I remember seeing you play bass, and then they had this guy from Bon Jovi playing bass too. Yes, yes. Is that what it, all, it, it all went a bit funny and got into uh, some legal shit that Sorry. is usual with something, you know. But yeah, um, yeah. it was a great time, and I was happy to be in, involved in the creation of it. You know, well, it's cool about the whole reinvention about doing that. Um, you know. You, you created something out of nothing. You're a part of something that really grew. I mean, I saw it several times. A great, great performance. A great a concept. Um, uh, how about Rockstar Supernova? I mean, <laughs> let's talk about I, mean, <laughs> I didn't expect that response from you, Gilby. But, but, I mean, you know, you got Tommy Lee, which is another guy. I can't imagine <laughs> too far from Axel up here, kind of. <laughs> I know. I seem to hang out with those guys. <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe yeah. it's you, bro. Yeah. Maybe it's you. <laughs> but well, the Supernova thing was interesting because what happened was the uh, the first season they did it, which was just called Rockstar, was for In Excess. Mm -hmm. Well, when they first started it, uh, they put a call out. They were thinking of having like an all-star backing band uh, for the singers because they, they, it was very important to them that they represented like rock and roll rather than the pop 
kind of music. So they wanted a live band. And so they put out a call and I auditioned for the, the backing band. And my band I auditioned with was Steve Gorman and Johnny Cole from the Black Crows. I would play guitar, Ryan Roxy from Alice Cooper's band played guitar, and Dizzy from Guns N' Roses played keyboards. And when we auditioned, they, uh, the producer, Mark Burnett, kept asking us to play more songs, play, play more songs. And, you know, we, we did it for a couple hours, went by. And then they called us like the next day. He said, we decided we're going to go in a different direction for the backing band, but I have something I want to talk to you about. And so he said, I think next year we're going to try something where we want to start a band, like start a band from fresh, get a couple guys together with some names, and then we'll audition the singers to be in it. So when the next year came along, they called me and they said, hey, put some names together for your, you know, your band. And I did. And Tommy Lee and Jason Newstead weren't on my list. Yeah. <laughs> and so what happened was Mark Burnett ran into Tommy Lee in Malibu somewhere, and he told Tommy about it. And Tommy goes, oh, my God, I want to be in it. And if you guys know Tommy, you know, he's very excitable. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like a little kid. <laughs> exactly. He's very yeah. excitable. So Tommy came aboard. And when Tommy came yeah. aboard, it just it, the whole thing changed. Yeah. And, uh, and Tommy's going, wow, let, let's call Jason. He's not playing with anybody. So it then it became myself, Tommy, and Jason. And Dave Navarro was actually the one who taught, he was the host of the show. He wasn't in the band, he was the host. He's kind of the one who talked me into it, because to be honest, I, you know, being in the backing band didn't sound so bad to me, but being like a part of the show, I was, I was a little, had some reservations. You know, I never thought <clears throat> that rock and roll was really represented right on television. You know, it, it always kind of, you know, candied it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so we had a conversation, and, and Mark Burnett and, and Dave Navarro, the ones who talked me into it, and they said, look, we will never, ever tell you what to say, what to wear. Be yourself. We want you to be yourself. And so that's kind of what happened. It's like we really, you know, and, and they, we got to be ourselves. We started a band, did it. We, it was a tour, a record involved. And, and I actually had a great time doing the band and doing the TV show. But, you know, we had to do the band business, you know, a touring mm -hmm. and all that. It started getting a little silly. And that kills it, just like <laughs> yeah, everything exactly. else, right? Yeah. When the just... lawyers got involved, it started getting funny. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I was uh -huh. with Ozzy. I was with Ozzy when we took them, Motley Crue, on their very first tour. Oh, my God. You know, and, and I saw it like John Bonham <laughs> stuff being done, like the spin and grab the cymbals yeah. with Tommy. And I said, wow, dude, that's pretty cool. Where'd you get it? He goes, from John Bonham. I said, well, indirectly, you got it from me. Cause I, <laughs> I used to do that with, You're you, being me. with Vanilla Fudge, you know. Yeah. And he didn't believe me. So after, after the... Uh, Tour. He came over to my house. I had this big house in Sherman Sherman Oaks. Mm -hmm. They had like a four thousand square foot house with all these you know, saunas and everything. So he came over the house and I showed him videos from the Ed Sullivan Show. Wow. Nineteen sixty eight. I said, "There it is." He says, "Wow, dude, I can't." He says, "You know, dude, dudes, every dude, other dude, yeah, yeah, <laughs> dude, I can't dude, believe dude. It, that you did that before Bonzo, dude. Oh my God." And then. First he walks into my house and says, man, I got to get a crib like this one day, you know, right? <laughs> and then he ended up, you know, where he ended up. But then I showed him the end of the song, uh, Shotgun, which uh -huh. was very similar to the end of Rock and Roll, which was done four years before. Yeah. And when he saw that, he went, dude, I can't believe it. So then, and we became buddies. Mm -hmm. I would go to his house when he was married to Heather, oh, and yeah. we'd, we'd watch Gene Krupa videos, the old oh, wow. videos on oh, his big yeah. screen TV. and. Yeah. And we'd be talking about stick spinning and all that. We'd go up you know, in the drum room and screw around. And he was like a little imagine, kid. He was always like a little kid, you know? Can yeah. you imagine well, the video like, that was on there before the Gene Krupa one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, I, do, hey, I think we do. Hey, <laughs> just, for the rec just for the record, my house is 4,005. Yeah, <laughs> these, these brothers are always one up in each other, man. Every that, was, that was the old house. Not the it's that house. five square squat, five square feet makes the difference. <laughs> that's what we say. It's always that, that one inch that counts, right? My driveway's <laughs> four thousand square said. feet. <laughs> Hey, John, you take me down the the timing and your involvement. You were to you were uh, 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 friends with Jeff Lynn. You were supposed to be part of ELO. You were part of ELO too. How did that whole thing? Yeah, work? actually, going. It's uh, I always loved ELO, and mm -hmm. going to to drummers. It was actually uh, Bev Bevan who contacted me, and a guy called Peter Haycock, who was in the band Climax Blues Band. Sure. And uh, Jeff had decided that he didn't want anything more to do with, with ELO. 
and do his solo stuff. And, and it's all, the guy's a genius. He's a songwriter, singer, producer. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, he's the extra Beatle, basically. Yeah. Um, and uh, Bev asked me to, uh, to, to join. And I said, oh, this would be really cool. And this was just before Asia. And um, I went to 44 Parkside Wimbledon, which is where the offices for Jet Records were, and met with um, Sharon's dad. Ah, uh, yes. Don. Mr. Don, Don, Don Arden. Don Arden. Yeah. The infamous Don, Don Arden. And I, I know, just, Don. I just, I, come from, <laughs> I just come from being managed by Bill Kerbishley from The Who yeah. to, to uh, meeting with Don Arden. And then actually, thirdly after that, uh, was Simon Napier-Bell, who was actually the guy with Raiding the Rockfall, who came up with the original idea of, of having a show with well-known people on. Um, but Don, uh, I'd heard all these stories about him hanging Robert Stigwood out side the window and <laughs> legendary uh, and and kidnapping their accountant and beating him <laughs> with a paperweight um but he was he was he was a tough cookie yeah. and it got into a lot of negotiations i went over to the states at the time to work with jim steinman on pre-production um at the power station and uh it they never it never came to fruition for me um, Jeff Lynn didn't want it to be called ELO, they wanted it to be called ELO Part 2. Mm -hmm. And then uh, during that time, um, I got asked by uh, Jeff Downs to join Asia and I went, yeah, I'm leaving this disaster. And I remember Don Arden calling me up and threatening me. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> leaves me, son. Watch your back, all right? Wow. So they, they used to do it with, um, in the original days, with bands, um, with Black Sabbath in the original days. He said he'd smash up a yeah. venue if, they, if the band didn't play there. And if the band wasn't playing there, someone would come around and um, smash all the windows and everything. Hmm. Oh my um, goodness. Huh. Yeah, it was well, the Birmingham. He, it was he the managed Birmingham one, Mafia. Of, one of the bands. Yeah, he managed one of my bands I was in called World War Three. But I remember pretty, that. And that's probably what it wound up being. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Gil, Gilby, uh, uh, tell me, well, first of all, would you ever do anything with Steven? Uh, I mean, he's, like, he's coming by us too. Uh, would you do a walk-on with, uh, with Adler? Would you do... Uh, oh, Steven, I love Steven. Yeah. Steven, Steven's great. Um, one of the first shows that Steven did when he kind of was getting back into things, he went to uh, <clears throat> South, South America with me. I was... I used to, most rock bands do well in South America, mm -hmm. and my uh, my first solo record I did in 94, we actually had three top 10 singles in Argentina. Wow. And when I went down there, I did shows with uh, with Aerosmith, and one time when I went down, uh, we wanted to do like a special guest thing, and they asked me if I'd consider playing with Steven, and I said, yeah, I go, Steven's a sweetheart, and, and we did it, and, and he was fantastic, you know oh, I mean? Yeah. You know, as you drummers know, you know, you're either born with that groove, you know, and he's got that groove. And, Great. and, you know, and I'm a huge Matt Sorum fan, and, and I love the way Steven plays with that swing. And, you know, here, Steve, comes, here comes the story. We told the story <laughs> before, but Steven was, Steven went to one of my drum-offs, you know, the drum-offs. Uh -huh. uh, I started it with, and Guitar Center sort of took it from me, but on, on this, I don't know what year it was, the second or third one. We, we were doing the guitar, the drum off outside in Sherman Oaks when they had the store in Sherman Oaks. Oh, we yeah, yeah, the yeah, the, the big one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, so we did it in the parking lot. And Stephen came down with Slash <laughs> and Stephen's mother. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, call, and I called him Stephen Alder because <laughs> right? they spelled it wrong. Oh, my gosh. All right? oh, and, then, shit. and he didn't win. And he actually oh. was freaking out, you know. Yeah. And his mother came up and started yelling at us. And not picking him, and Slash was with him. Slash oh, told me that story. Oh, funny, you know. Well, I, when funny. He, we first came up play by place, when I first met him, uh -huh. I thought he was kidding. He's like, 
Hey, man, I really love your place, man. I'm having a great time. I thought he was kidding his voice. Oh, yeah. I thought, yeah. like, wow. Yeah. And after um, all he's been through, we're like, He's man. overcome some big challenges oh, over man. the years. Yeah, especially, yeah, yeah, especially recently. It's, yeah. again, like, but yeah. he's an amazing musician. Yeah. But, you know, I, the way I look at things, guys like, like, like Stephen and, and Tommy, they're very genuine. Yep. They're yes. very genuine. They're very like real loving, people, you loving. Know? exactly. And I got no problems with any of that. I mean, you know, he really cares about music. Yeah. He's proud he's a, of that he's record. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, oh, we have a question guy. from our buddy Francois in France. Wants to know oh, from whew. either or both of our guys: Is there anybody that you guys are following now, or you think was on the cutting edge, or a really cool band that's out now? Hmm. All um, of us. <laughs> and all of us. No. Everybody except Vinny. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I, especially, me. especially our guests, because I know you're managing one now, Carm. I am. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think there's some great bands out there right now, young guys. I think the the band Rival Sons are incredible. Yeah. You yeah, know, they, I, 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 they have a great sound. Um, you know, and, and their music, every record, they're getting better and better. And they're classic, you know, I, I, and they're classic sounding. You know? Exactly. It's, it's just yeah. rock and roll, you know, which is uh, what we, we need. We're going to have young. we're going to have Dirty Honey on the show in a couple of weeks. They're another yeah, great young another band. One. Greta Van uh, Fleet's uh, another one. And I'm managing yeah. this band called yeah. Kodiak, which is a, a young Van Halen kind of band. Right. Wow. And Greta, yeah. Greta Van Fleet gets so much stick about, you know, how similar they are to Zeppelin. It's like... Well, it's a lot better than if they were being a bloody DJ, you know. Oh. So we all work from our influences. Yeah. Well, you know what? I mean, it's like saying someone, that opera singer, he sounds like Pavarotti. I mean, yeah. are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, that doesn't suck. It's not a bad thing. Right. Taylor, Taylor Swift and Justin Bieber, I think, are the two. Very close. Very, yeah. Very I th close. I think they, what, they got I think a future. The, the Greta Van Fleet case is just because there's there's such a small sample size of young rock bands, you know, uh, yeah. they're going a little harsh. It's like, you know, when, when I was young and I was buying records of whether it was Zeppelin, Alice Cooper, Kiss, or Aerosmith, I bought everything. Yeah. <laughs> Every fog hat, Ted Nugent, oh, I yeah. bought everything, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's like I didn't judge them too harshly. It's like I was just so excited to get music. Mm -hmm. I think you got to be happy with the new young band making music, you know. Hey, Agreed. Yeah. Gilby, what's, uh, tell us really uh, briefly before we uh, we have to close our show, but tell us about the gospel truth. <laughs> the gospel truth. So, guys, I have a new record coming out April 23rd, and this record has actually been done for two years. Um, it, it's been done for a while. Um, we kind of put it back. We were just about to release it right when the, the uh, pandemic hit, so we put it off hoping to play live, and it got to a point of we just got to get it out. But I got some great drummers on it. Uh, Kenny Aronoff is on it. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Perkins from Jane's Addiction is on it. Matt Starr's on it. Um, the great thing about being a solo act is I don't have to be stuck with you. I don't know, Vinny. He didn't guy. call me. Did he call you, <laughs> Vinny? Uh, yeah, he did. I told him. Uh, <laughs> I told him I can't afford him. He passed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's what's great to me about being a solo artist is I can have a combination of different guys, drummers and bass players. He, he, sent, me a bunch of, bass. he sent me a bunch of charts that were written in pencil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The full circle. The full circle. I, I so, couldn't even so, see him. I, I what, my glass. Is, is it gospel? Is it gospel? No, no, no. It's just a, the gospel truth is just a name. It's, you know, it's my oh, truth like, right I, now. I, it's, I, it's all rock and roll. It's loud guitars, man. Yeah, cool. Well, we need everybody because our, our show is taking off, and that's the gospel truth because people you go. are loving it. It's <laughs> yeah. our 44th episode next week. We've got uh, Kofi Baker and Dweezil Zappa. We need everybody to share, like, check our Spotify uh, uh, channel, check our, our uh, what else, our podcast on, on uh, okay. Apple. I mean, iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio. We're Music. all over the yeah, place. All over. Our yeah. YouTube channel, subscribe to. We need you guys to help us out there because I'll tell you what, we are becoming an inter – these two guys are becoming an international <laughs> – Hey, Ron. E hey, Ron. Yes. What? We can't make it next week. <laughs> Um, Gilby, John, yeah. what are you guys doing with yeah, the there you go. this week? <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, listen. Take over. You got two other Italian guys. You got you got, you got, guys. You got, you got one. <laughs> Gilby, I'm giving you more time they gave you for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction, so right you got a week to prepare. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys. Gilby Clark, John Payne, love you guys. Thank See you guys. John Payne thank you guys. at the August thank 28th. You. Be safe. We're, it looks like we're going to be opening up really, really soon. God bless you yeah. all. And here, you know, salute to live music coming back, right? Right on. Yeah. Yes. Right on.
We'll see you next week on Hanging and Banging. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good night.